Welcome to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, Courageously Expanding Love with me, Elizabeth Cunningham. Has the way that love has arisen in you seemed out of place or even taboo? My mission is to expand the conversation of love in the world. Is it possible to have deep, loving, healthy relationships? Have you ever been curious about having more than one relationship or partner at a time? Get ready to transform in love. Be courageous and set yourself free. In this show, we talk about relationships, sex, love, and the ways we wish we could be, but never thought were possible. I shed light on things that are not always talked about with conversations about expanding love. The Elizabeth Cunningham Show starts now. Welcome to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show. My name is Elizabeth Cunningham, and we are here to courageously expand love. And today I am so happy, excited, honored, just ridiculously inspired um, by my guest. And the topic that we are talking today is about releasing shame and releasing shame around sex and sexuality. And I am joined by uh, Marnika Shelton. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for being here. Yes. Uh, oh. <laughs> I, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a moment to properly introduce you. Um, Marnika is an empowerment coach. Um, and is the owner of Nika Shirelle's LLC, the host of the It Cast, a uh, real talk on sex. And you specialize in health and sexuality and you empower and inspire people. That is absolutely true um, across all cultural backgrounds by breaking down taboo, aiming to create a world where people feel loved, honored and respected and, you know, uh, Marnika sits on the board of the Grateful Garment Project, and their work has been featured it, with the San Francisco AIDS Foundation, the, uh, I'm going to say this wrong, SOMART. <laughs> SOMART's Cultural Center. <laughs> okay, SOMART's Cultural Center. Okay, good. And in Math Magazine, Bitch Media, OZY, Slate, and Cosmopolitan Magazine. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for joining oh, me today. Thank you. Thank you for that lovely intro. I so much appreciate that. <laughs> you're so like, welcome. I, I do. I, I want to like totally honor who you are because you're this incredible human being. Thank you. And thank you for having me be on the show, the show itself and the work that you do. I'm just so honored to be here. And, you know, like we've done some work together and I'm just like, this is juicy. Like, <laughs> So uh, thank you. Thank you for creating this space. Yes, you are so welcome. Yeah, well, I mean, we had such a great time on your show. I had to invite you on mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to like post them together. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Perfect. All right. Well, we are we are going to dive into, you know, our topic today about um, shame and about shame and, uh, you know, sexual shame specifically, and then how to release that shame. Um, so I want to talk first about, you know, what do you, what do you see that people are dealing with? Like, let's put it into context. I know that, I mean, I deal with, you know, sexual shame, right? Oh, and yeah. so, uh, you know, let's put this into uh, context for people. You know, what do you mean? Or maybe what do you um, see really when we talk about sexual shame? Absolutely. So one of the biggest sexual dysfunctions is actually low self-image. So when we talk about how we've grown up, how we've been acculturated and told that we're supposed to be this way or we're supposed to be that way. And, you know, fitting into this normative idea of what society puts on us can actually cause us to feel really out of place and really wrong about ourselves. Um, when I started getting into the work around shame and looking into it, what came up was the conversation around self-hate and regret. And when I think about that, I'm like, I had a lot of self-hate growing up. Like there was just so much baggage that told me that I was wrong as a person, 
like something that tells you like you're wrong as a person <laughs> like who not, you are is not like yeah is not only not right but absolutely wrong yeah absolutely you know and I think about it just as a you know, uh, uh, it side conversation, but like the idea around immigration and how someone's body could be considered illegal, you mm -hmm. know, and like looking at the history of that and how many people and how many bodies have been considered in that space. So looking at conversations like that, like it's beyond sex and it very much impacts who we are and how we operate sexually. Um, yeah, the yeah. one that, Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was gonna say, no, that that gave me chills like all the way up, especially, you know, I know some um some very, very personal stories with people that I know about about specifically around the immigration and like the wrongness that they carry in their body about this idea that they are illegal or that they don't belong or that there's something not just wrong with them. Cause you know, like I've had self self-image um issues where it's like, you know, I'm not skinny enough or I'm not in shape enough or you know what what have you right um and but to to think about that you live with that your body is not only it should look a different way but it it should just exist differently like the way that you exist is wrong yeah yeah absolutely um and it, it does you know it cuts to the core because I think a lot of people can relate to this and you know, on the deeper levels, it comes down to the conversation of fear. You know, it's like, I'm afraid that someone's going to find this out about me, or they're going to judge me about this, or they're going to be offended by this, this representation or this, this idea they have of who I am or who I'm supposed to be. So it can be quite confronting. Um, and I think that it's something that it's a very human experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah, abs I'm absolutely because you know as we've already pointed out, there are so many ways in which this can show up for people. So, what are some of the ways specifically uh, that people deal with this? You know, we talked about um, you know having this idea of like being illegal, but you know, what are some other ways in which this shows up? This like self hate or you know, body image or, you know, shame really shows up, but specifically like in our sexuality, how does that show up? Oh, 100%. So yeah. <laughs> the, the place that this sends me is, you know, like my upbringing. So I grew up in the South. I grew up, so the Bible Belt, uh, very Christian, um, you know, Puritan concepts and rules around sexuality, and also like a lot of limited knowledge. And what that, what that brought up for me, you know, there were conversations when I was a kid in Bible school where one of the instructors said, God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Right. And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> As a kid, I was like, that sounds funny because it rhymes. But as I got older, I'm like, that is some of the most damaging kind of conversation that you could put into the realm of a child. You know, it's like no matter like you haven't even developed or formed concepts of sexuality at that point, but you're already hearing, hey, this is wrong. Don't right. do that. Right. And for myself, you know, I I've always been queer. I didn't know I was queer. I was always trying to like be I was, I was like, I'm going to get married one day and it's going to be cool. And like, I hope it's to a guy because then I'll be able to pass. I'm going to pass for straight. <laughs> and, right. Yeah, it, it sounds funny now, but that was a lot of years of suffering. Yeah, and I and I, I completely agree with you. And you know, our our stories are similar in that way. But and I think that a lot of people can relate to that. Is that you know even before because you you know as you're learning your own sexuality, most of the time you're trying to reconcile the feelings that you have versus you know what's acceptable, what's okay out here, what you're being taught. And so when the feelings that you have um, don't match or even contradictory to, you know, mm -hmm. what you're being taught or you're like, oh, wow, I'm having these feelings and I can see out here or here, you know, in the case of like Adam and Steve, right? It's like, I can hear that how I feel is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get into the illegality of the body. 
So, you know, like immigration is one conversation, but when we look at, you know, the politics around being homosexual and queer and how, you know, there were laws put in place to effectively repress these, this group of people and hey, your love, your rights are not legal. Um, same thing has happened, uh, especially with women's bodies. You know, like you don't have the autonomy of your body to choose. You don't have, you know, the, the conversation that allows you to feel safe and secure inside of who you are. Um, and it happens, it absolutely happens across the board. Um, <laughs> there, there are so, oh, and the eugenics movement. So that one was um, the whole, are you fit to marry conversation? So back in the, uh, the turn of last century, around the 1920s, there came that conversation of, are you fit to marry? Are you sane? Are you, uh, are you wealthy? Are you white? Like, are th these different things that if you didn't fall into these categories, you were forcibly sterilized against your will? because therefore you were not fit to procreate. So looking more at illegal bodies <laughs> and how that's shown up and how that can impact us. Yeah, and, and how that's still, you know, we talked about that in the 1920s and, you know, you can even talk last, last week, you know, we talked about, you know, Roe v. Wade and you know, <laughs> 1960s and like all this stuff, but really like that, this still impacts us, you know, today. Yeah. And, you know, especially like, in, you know, we talk about, um, you just mentioned like the right to like even procreate, you know, and like the numbers are staggering on, the amount of women specific, um, or rather, you know, vulva bodied people, right? The pe people yeah. who can have babies um, and especially vulva bodied people who yeah. are black, who die, yeah. you know, during, you know, are have serious complications, you know, during um, childbirth, because, you know, these concepts, these ideas, these beliefs that we have in our society are still so prevalent that even if it's not like, quote unquote, illegal, it's still ingrained in how we act and how we treat people. As right. Well. And the shame that we carry around these things. Um, so uh, assigned female at birth is one of the terms that we utilized, you know, talk about, like, it's not just a woman thing. It's not just a reproductive thing. It's like, have you been acculturated as female in this society? And that's a whole broad concept around gender. <laughs> yeah, I was um, gonna say, we'll, we'll add it in, uh, and all of the things that we've touched on, you know, we really could expand into for days and weeks and years and whole other episode. <laughs> whole other episode yeah exactly and um but yeah we are going to stay on the topic of sexuality in this in this um conversation and we are going to take a break here really quick um but when we come back you know now that we kind of understand like more broadly what this topic is um i'd really love to hear your um your insight your take on um on sexuality and uh really diving deeper into this aspect of shame and sexuality and how that impacts just day-to-day -day life like that's kind of my next next question for you but we're going to cover that um, when we get back from the break um, so everybody stay tuned All right, welcome back to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, where we are courageously expanding love today with uh, Nika Shirell, um, and we are talking about sexuality and shame. And before the break, we really talked about like how broad this topic is. Like, it's just, it's so broad, it's so pervasive, like not just in our lives, but in our culture, in our history, it's so huge. Um, and to narrow it down um, for today, what we're really, what I really wanna dive into is how does this affect people on a day-to-day basis? How does sexuality and shame impact people every day? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, looking at the different types of shame that impact sexuality. So we talked earlier about like body shame. Mm -hmm. um, there is that whole space of 
I don't feel good in my body. And, you know, I can't connect with this moment. I can't actually be present in who I am or express myself sexually. So I think about like gender, uh, gender dysphoria and not actually feeling, you know, feeling right in how, how you, how your body presents in the world. Um, that shows up in so many different ways, whether we're talking about skin tone, hair color, hair texture, eye color. Um, there are all these different ways in which we can fit in this realm of not being good enough. And that not good enough is where the shame comes in at. That comparative judgment-based, I don't fit into what's considered good enough in this arena. And you know, the, the shame goes in a multitude of directions. Um, I definitely see it, you know, like even people who are like considered attractive go through their own insecurities around what that is and behaviors and how that expresses and shows up. Um, and it also keeps people from seeing how beautiful and attractive they are. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely friggin lutely and it does it really does impact every single person you know this this concept of not good enough is so I mean it's it's that horizon that you can never reach yeah. right so any person can be impacted by like not good enough oh, yeah. and and it's important you know also to recognize how that impacts people in different ways for even though we all deal with it you know on an individual level, it's really um, nuanced, right? Yeah. Because everyone deals with their own individual, like, well, I'm not, you know, light skinned enough, or I'm not dark enough, or I'm not, yeah, you mentioned yeah. hair. Tan and and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. And even, you know, men with like the whole muscle jock situation, or, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, and then there's things like uh, financial, you know, financial shame, like, can I afford to go on this date? Can I afford to care about this person? Can I afford to create that family that I want? Um, there, yeah, it, it shows up in a multitude of ways, uh, different for everybody. Um, and I don't want to leave, like, I, I want to make sure that I don't leave the, like, that concept out of it. Because I think a lot of people, when we talk to these conversations, it's like, oh, we talk about, like, you know, women's shame and, like, how, like, these things have been treated and created and, like, everyone, yeah, everyone goes through this and it's a different conversation each time. Like it's unique. Um, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just thinking of other ways in which shame actually, uh, actually impacts our lives. Um, so I talked earlier about, uh, about the self-hate, that aspect of it and like the religious trauma, uh, mm -hmm. that I experienced. Um, there's also the regret. So there's that space when you do something that you know you shouldn't have done, or you didn't do something that you really feel like you you would would have been you know appropriate or right to do, and um, and then you have that experience, you know, like that that di that didn't land, that wasn't okay, it didn't go well. And carrying that level of regret around, like if it's something that you didn't learn from or can't let go of, that can also perpetuate that context of self-hate. Um, and that's the one arena where when you are experiencing this for yourself, it's an okay learning experience, as long as it's not being projected outwards or used to completely destroy yourself. Does that did that make sense? I will. It, Maybe a little. <laughs> I was going to say, well, I, I'm going to recap and then tell me if I, if I got it. Um, so, uh, you know, something happens and if it happens in more of like a public way, and it doesn't even have to be public, like, you know, tons of people, but can even be like with a partner or with your family or something like that, then the shame and regret can be heightened because there's, you know, an, other people who are involved that might have different expectations or you feel like you should be a certain way around them. And when it's more something where, you know, it's not, where it's more individual, then you could still carry that regret, but you might still be able to learn from it. Did I fully capture that or no? 
Not entirely. Okay. Um, th- like the, the experience doesn't have to necessarily be public, um, but it's just something that like, you know, doesn't align with who you know yourself to be or who you want yourself to be. And when you're, oh gosh, <laughs> this is a really, really, really silly example, but I'm going to give it. <laughs> okay, go for it. Let's go. So, uh, it. <laughs> so I, I was out one day and I saw this really cute girl. And it was great. Like she was flirting with me and I was flirting with her. And I was like, this is awesome. At least I think we were flirting. And (laughs) Sometimes flirting is so hard. You know, you're like, are you really nice? Or do you think I'm cute? Because I think you're cute. Like, what are we doing here? (laughs) (laughs) So at the end of this exchange, I was like, oh, I should have gotten her number or given her mine. Something. I should have done something. And I didn't. And then I stood there and I thought about it. And I thought about it and I felt bad. I felt super insecure. I went through all that, like, I'm not good enough to go talk to her. Like, it's early in the morning. I don't think I brushed my teeth. Like all these weird things that had me feel bad about who I was in that moment, such that I didn't take that opportunity. And so that's that like personal level of that internalized bit where now that, that brought up a lot of shame, a lot of shame. Yeah, well, and explain, because this is where I hear other people's voices being like, oh, well, just be easier on yourself. You know, just just give yourself a break. Like, like, (laughs) we're all human. Like, just, you know, like, wow, like, why do you have to beat yourself up so much? But it's like, even though we know these things, we like, we know that. Like, we've all heard that before. But like, why doesn't that, why doesn't that work? (laughs) (laughs) Because people want to fix it for us. They want to make it better. And there's also this judgment around, like, you can't feel bad. Like, you can't have a certain emotion uh, because it'll mean that you're weak or, or whatever, fill in the blank. But the reason that doesn't work is because there's something for you to get in that moment. Like there's a reason why it doesn't land or settle well. And if you can be with that emotion and whatever comes up, you'll get what's there for you. Yeah, that I mean, that really landed for me. Yeah. Where there, if you can actually just be with the emotion and you don't have to like, you don't have to suppress it. You don't have to be like, oh, I shouldn't be feeling this emotion or I, I should be, you know, more compassionate to myself or whatever, like, instead of trying to fix it right in the moment, just being like, oh, like, I feel disappointed, or upset, or like, let down or whatever, right? Like, sad, I feel sad, you know, and just allowing yourself to (laughs) let yourself feel that. (laughs) How about instead of, you know, buck up, Chuck, it's just (laughs) How, why can't we just be like, you know what, it's okay to feel that. <laughs> yeah, and not judge our emotions, mm-hmm. you know, not try to fix them, put them in a box or whatever is supposed to happen. But, you know, just that, that being with it and that knowingness allows you to heal and transform something. Mm-hmm. So this is actually coming out of a question that someone asked in one of my, one of my workshops around, is, the, is there ever a situation where shame is a good thing? Mm -hmm. And that's that moment where I'm like, well, shame is a complex emotion and you've got to be with it and you've got to sit and dive into what's actually underneath it. You know, like it might be anger. It might be a loss of dignity. It might be disappointment. As you said, you know, like there's, there's so many things that are underneath shame that unless you can stop and explore them, it's just going to build up and get real heavy. Yeah. And I, I, I want to like emphasize and kind of ruminate here because this is, this is where the healing starts is that allowing, like allowing for shame to be a teacher and allowing for your emotions to be okay and allowing for that discovery of, you know, what are my emotions trying to tell me, Mm -hmm. right? What it, okay, like underneath shame is anger or like for me, a lot of the time underneath shame is disappointment. I get disappointed in myself. And so it's like, what is that? What is that disappointment, you know, trying to tell me or express? Um, Because ultimately 
your emotions do have the best intentions for you because they are a part of who you are, right? Yeah. 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 Wow. That's I'm I'm just like, who okay. If no one gets anything out of this episode except for this. <laughs> So uh, I would love to, I want to talk more because I think that, you know, we've expanded on shame and we've expanded on, you know, how we may deal with it in our own lives. Um, And I would love to, and we're going to go on a break here pretty soon, but I would love to talk more about healing Mm. and healing from shame and what, because the healing journey is not an easy one either. Yeah. And so what I want to talk about when we come back from our break is, is that healing journey and what people can expect um, in healing from the shame that they have felt. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, we will take a break and that is what we will talk about when we come back. All right, welcome back from our break. Um, you are listening to, watching the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, Courageously Expanding in Love. And we are here with Nika Shirell and where we where we got to uh, before our break was whew, that space of allowing ourselves to feel whatever emotions are there when we allow ourselves to listen into the shame that we're feeling and uh, wow that was that was really deep really incredible um if you're just tuning in now definitely uh, um listen to the uh recorded episode after this comes out um and what we're going to talk about now is okay now that we've allowed ourselves to feel into that shame to you know, distinguish what are the emotions that are underneath that and really listen to ourselves, listen to our bodies. Um, Like, what does the healing journey look like now? Because I know that it's not an easy one, but you know, what do you, what do you see, Nika? What do you deal with? What do your clients deal with? What does the healing journey look like? Yeah. The biggest thing that my clients deal with actually is letting go of judgment. Like, when yeah, more about that yeah yeah when an experience is acknowledged that there's shame around you know something comes up and you know there's that upset letting go of the anger the judgment the conflict within themselves you know like how could i how, how could i let this happen to me or how could i do that or you know, like, how could I even feel this way about myself? Like, how could I have felt this way about myself this whole time? You know, like, like that one is a really, really deep one when people are like going in. Cause it's, I think it's easy to, it's easy to forgive yourself on the surface. Like, oh, okay. I made a mistake. You know, like, okay, not a problem. Mm-hmm. Move that's on. like the cognitive part where it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's the, that's the <laughs> knowing. It's like, yes. well, know that I am okay because see, look, my body is intact. I am breathing oxygen. Like I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're not getting into those deeper levels of what, what created me putting myself in that not okay situation or what created me feeling this about myself or others. You know, one of the things that when we have the experience of insecurity or, you know, when we're judging other people, it's really that like feedback loop within ourselves. So the thing that comes up for me is like, I've been in business 10 years. I love my company. It's wonderful. (laughs) And the whole time that I was getting to being here, I didn't see how awesome it was. Like I was super insecure. I was freaked out. I was sad. I was filling in the blank about it. And I stopped and I looked back one day and I was like, wow, this was really incredible. And I wasn't 
operating like it was really incredible. Mm -hmm. I was really hard on myself. And when I stepped back and I looked at that, it was so heartbreaking. It was like, I did this to myself for so long. How could I do this? Mm -hmm. And when you begin to open up and expand and like feel love for yourself and feel love from others and begin to receive, it can be a little painful. It can be a little scary. Mm -hmm. It can definitely be uncomfortable. And it's part of the, that process. It's one of those steps. Um, yeah, being yeah. able. Yeah, I see, I see that with, you know, and, you know, in the context of sexuality too, um, like I didn't come out as queer until I was 29, which now thinking about it, I'm like, oh, 29, like rock star status. Um, <laughs> 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 good for me you know but like hindsight 2020 right but at the time I was like so ashamed I was just like I you know I feel like a fraud I feel like you know because you know obviously up until that point I'd really been dating mostly inside of like heterosexual relationships um and also like I'd been in queer relationships but I didn't treat them as like full relationships right mm -hmm. because I like, quote unquote wasn't queer um yeah. and so then I felt a lot of shame around that I was like oh my god I've like diminished people in relationships and I've diminished myself and yeah. you know all of that right and like and I took so long to come out and like all you know all of it all of it all of it all of it and so and I think that partially uh, one one thing that I heard in what you shared as well is that when you let go of that when you let go of the shame there is a loss yeah that's kind of the other trippy part about it is because you feel like when you when you have a loss even though it's a loss of kind of like a good thing like <laughs> you know quote unquote like when you let go <laughs> of the shame it's still a loss and it feels like a missing yeah, yeah. And when we feel that missing, then it feels weird. We're like, oh, like, did I do the, and then there's the, the doubt, like, did I do the right thing? Should I still feel shame about this? You know, like, yeah. you know, do you, do you see that as well? Yeah. And, and one of the things that, um, that I hear, yeah, one of the things that I hear in your sharing is that, that level of, oh, I apologize. <laughs> A couple of thoughts that got collided. <laughs> I, that happens to me too. I'm like, okay, hold on. I just had five thoughts all at once. It's all good. <laughs> uh, um, okay. So the level of shame when we're talking about like relationships and that whole coming out bit uh that's actually what's there for me so you talked about coming out at like 29 and I'm like I came out like five times between the time I turned like no probably 12 times <laughs> from the time I was like 16 until I was like in my late 20s and I didn't actually start enjoying my sex life until like four months ago and oh shit well also congratulations <laughs> thank you I made it <laughs> And um, oh my God, what was so what was so crazy about that? I looked back and I was like, I again, didn't treat people well in relationships, and I would take on things that were not compatible to who I am. And I look back and I'm like, I think I was kind of a heartbreaker. There were so many guys who like were like right there, and I was like, eh, whatever, totally didn't notice them or didn't care. <laughs> and that that also stems from. Um, from that not being present and not loving the self. So what you were talking about was um, that grief, that grief of letting go of who you are, who you believe yourself to be, who you used to be. Like there is a missing there. I, when I went through, or when I started this journey and I'm in no, by no means done, <laughs> um, I actually had to allow certain parts of myself to begin to die off and releasing them one at a time so that I could actually live newly. Wow. 
That's really powerful. What were some of the things that you allowed to die off? Oh, huh. well, recently, very recently, uh, it just totally fell away like no big deal. I went from calling myself fat to referring to myself as voluptuous. And right, and it wasn't even a thought. <laughs> Ooh, that feels so good in my body. I'm just like, Ooh, nice. <laughs> I walked past the mirror and I was like, oh. <laughs> Voluptuous, oh right? God. Yes. And, um, <laughs> and there was a time when the voice that told me I was fat was so loud. It was so loud and so damaging. Like. I was, I, I, God, the history, I was on diet pills when I was like eight years old because I was too fat. I went through all of these different experiences of being teased, being bullied both inside and outside of my family. And this like disconnect of like what it's actually like to be in that body, especially as a child, like children don't have much autonomy around their body. Like it just whatever the caregiver is providing, whatever, like whatever resources are, you know, being provided. And I, I grew up really short and really chunky. And when I finished college, I ended up actually having weight loss surgery. Um, I was still on my parents' insurance and my mom was like, oh, you better get it now or you'll be fat forever. And I was like, okay. Well, <laughs> maybe, and that was like a surgically induced eating disorder. Mm -hmm. It was really, really unfortunate. And when I got to a place where I had to like become okay with my body, I had to forgive myself for allowing myself to go through that, for, you know, taking, like accepting that it was okay or thinking that it was okay, knowing that it wasn't right for me. And just having to, having to honor myself newly. Um, I don't carry that pain around anymore. <laughs> oh, wow. so, well, first of all, I'm just so happy. So, so happy to hear that you don't carry that pain around anymore. And, and just to like kind of class above the class, like highlight some of the things that you said. And I think that Wow. For, and, and also like, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that story. And I know that so many people can relate to that and that there was that moment where you had to forgive yourself. And I think that that's so important. You know, I, we really wanted to highlight what it looks like to heal from shame. And I think that forgiving yourself learning how to trust yourself, learning how to trust how you feel about yourself and your own intuition. And that like your body is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like your body is beautiful, Mika. Like it, it's voluptuous. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and, but you wouldn't mm. have been able to even hear that compliment. Like I would have thought, I, I thought that about you I, since I've, no, I mean, I haven't known you for that long, but I've always thought that about you. <laughs> <laughs> but like, until, until you had forgiven yourself, until you had that trust in yourself, until you, you know, until you took on that you are beautiful and voluptuous, like, then you can actually hear it from other people, right? right. I think that that's part of the healing, healing journey as well is like, what then is possible is, and I'm going to save the, I'm going to leave that as a cliffhanger because we're going to go on another, another break here. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I freaking love you. Um, but we're going to, but that's, but we're going to go into now what's possible. That's what's next. All right. Stick around. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show. We're just dancing. We're just dancing on all of our breaks. Endlessly. Um, <laughs> thank you everyone for uh, listening in and 
being a part of this incredible, incredible conversation with Nika around um, sexuality and shame and whoo, wow, like we have gone deep in this conversation and I'm so grateful for, for you and really leading us through this. And what I wanna talk about now is you know what's now possible okay so we've talked about shame we've talked about what it is we've talked about how it impacts us we've talked about how we can heal and now what like when we heal from shame what especially like sexual sexuality shame around sexuality blah blah blah, blah, blah words especially when we heal from shame around our sexuality you know yeah. what's possible so two things come up for me. Um, first off, I used to be a hater. Like, do you know that term? Like just, <laughs> and, and what was so interesting is that when I started to love myself, I was able to love other people instead of being jealous or envious or like, you know, competitive, like they've got it going on and like, whatever, they think they're better than me. And honestly, I think they're better than me. <laughs> Which is why I think that, which is why I'm upset about it. Yes. <laughs> And so really like getting to push that aside and just see the beauty in everyone. And the, I want to say like the, the equality, but like, really it's like, we're both going through a human experience and your experience is beautiful and unique. And so is mine. And it's highly unlikely that either of us is actually judging each other more than we're judging ourselves. Cause there's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 1000%. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so like letting go of that space, not only with your own emotions and yourself, but it'll allow you to release that between you and other people. Mm. Um, and then when you release that, oh, sorry, were you going to No, 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 go ahead. Thing? Go ahead. <laughs> okay. No, you so, said two things and I interrupted you. Okay. Say the second thing. <laughs> so the second thing is communication the ability to communicate. Um, it's, it makes possible for you to communicate your needs, your wants, your desires without fear or fear of judgment. And it also allows you to communicate your experiences. So like for myself to be able to talk about the fact that I've been sexually assaulted, the fact that I can talk about what it was like being raised, you know, growing up as a young black girl in a time in a world that told me like, that's not okay. Seeing, you know, like seeing so many different aspects of my own personal trauma and being able to share them with the world such that it can heal someone else. I just, I think that's the fifth time on this conversation where I've just got whole body chills because that's so beautiful and so profound. And when, when you are able to heal and then you can talk about it without that shame yeah. and just talk about it in general and to be able to talk about it without that charge too. right right like there's like a charge that it has over you and then when you're able to release that and you can just say like yeah this is what happened to me or this is what my experience was or you know and now that I've released it, this is what's possible now for me and then when you are able to do that it does open up a space for other people for them for them to step into for it's like this is what's possible when you are what's possible then there's a space for people to be that too. Exactly. They get permission. You know, it's the uh, it's the allowing and the the invitation to be able to step in. So yeah. Whew. Wow. Well, I almost have like a mind to be like, all right, episode done. And like <laughs> you just have to just stop right there because that is that that is really that is incredible. And thank you for bringing us all the way, you know, to this point. And, uh, um, you know, I'm going to go into my end of, end of session questions, okay. um, which is if, if people were going to have one takeaway, if you could just give, you know, someone one nugget from what we shared today, what would that be? Mm. Trust. 
trust and listen to your gut. We didn't say that explicitly, but that, that small voice inside of you that is letting you know exactly what you want mm. or exactly what you feel, mm. be with it mm. and follow its guidance. Oof. Thank you. And if there is one action that people could take, what could they do? <laughs> okay, so my first thought was like, take yourself on a date. <laughs> and it, seems, it seems totally silly. <laughs> I think that's amazing. Hey, and you just said, trust your gut, trust that little voice. Exactly. Trust your inner voice. There you go. So and, and what's beautiful about that is like, get to know yourself is what, what's in the heart of that. Like, what do you like? What's, what's in there? And, you know, when you take yourself on a date, you're really looking to like treat yourself well. So you actually get to know yourself a little bit more. Yeah. Beautiful. I love that. Get to know yourself, take yourself on a date. Beautiful. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. What is it? How can, how can people find you? What are you up to? If people want to do stuff with you, what is that? What can yes. people do with you? 100%, 100%. So you can find me weekly on Fridays, uh, the it cast real talk on sex on our YouTube channel channel under Nika Sherelle. I believe that's in my link tree, which I, I provide. Yes. yes. Um, well, there. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, we do uh, community events. So we've got a workshop series coming up on the healing power, uh, healing, healing through pleasure, which is a six week Tantra series uh, that we're going to be hosting. And we also offer a lot of events and classes. Um, and then uh, one of the most exciting things that I do is I make sex toys. <laughs> So <laughs> you can find that work at triggerhappytoy.com. They are adventure toys. They're fun. They're playful. And uh, they're designed to empower and, uh, and inspire. So stuff. Check me out oh on Linktree. Oh <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. And your Linktree link is in the uh, episode notes on the Transformation Talk Radio. Um, so those will be, and on the screen right now too. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> And on the screen right now too, nothing would happen without Jacob, nothing. Um, wow, we love you. <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely um, check out Nika, check out um, all of their stuff. Uh, I mean, if, if you haven't already gather, gathered from listening to this um, episode, um, they know what they're talking about. It's amazing. Um, what yes. was what it looked like you're gonna say something yes um and if you would like to check out the work that I do in person I am going to be speaking at the some of us fest this summer it's um the weekend of May 17th through 22nd and I'm going to be offering the uh the full uh, shame like healing sexual shame workshop uh, with them so definitely keep an eye out on our calendar uh, at nikasherelle.com. We've got a weekly support group and just a number of other uh, offerings. So like my, <laughs> I'm remembering now specifically around shame. <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, the support group is free on Sundays at noon. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your time, your space, your energy, your expertise, your love, your guidance. I have felt so held and even healed just through this conversation with you. So I just, I appreciate you and honor you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Such a, such an honor. Mm, you're so welcome. All right. To everyone who is listening or watching, thank you so much for your time and attention and energy as well. Um, I hope you take on um, Nika's suggestions um, as far as what you can now take away and what you can now do. And if you enjoyed this uh, episode, please, whatever platform you're listening on, uh, click the like button, click the subscribe, click the doorbell, click the all the things, you know, write in the review it does i don't know i don't know 
you know, but just click on the things. If you want to support me in this episode and these conversations, um, it really makes a difference when um, we get those interactions because then more people are able to find us and more people are able to participate and be involved in these types of conversations. So thank you, dear listener, for all of your dear listener or watcher for all of your support and your love and uh, your commitment to really courageously expanding in love. Love you all. You have been listening to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, Courageously Expanding Love with me, Elizabeth Cunningham. Tune in live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com, where we shed light on relationships, sex, love, and the ways we wish we could be, but never thought were possible. Learn to love yourself and create the relationships you want. Connect with me at elizabethannecunningham.com. That's elizabethannecunningham.com.